set to be the star of the Olympic Games in Tokyo later this summer. Simone Biles first stars in Fort Worth, Texas, where this week she looks for a record seventh all around national title. Other than Biles, though, spots on the women's Olympic team are up for grabs, and one of Biles' teammates is on a hot streak, hoping to prove herself on the national stage. Plus, a pair of Olympic medalists make their return to the U.S. championships after years away with new faces to contend against. Tonight in Fort Worth, NBC Sports welcomes you to the 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships from Fort Worth, Texas. Brand new arena, Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, the site for the first time ever for the National Championships. Great to have you along, Terry Gannon, alongside Nastia Lucan and Tim Daggett, the Olympic gold medalist. Guys, anytime you have the opportunity to watch the best in the world, whatever it is, do her thing, the best thing she does, well, you feel lucky, and tonight we get that chance with Simone Biles. We know, we assume she's going to be a star in Tokyo, Nastia. What about tonight? What about this week? What's it all about for her? Well, you know, she really is the greatest of all time, and she has more titles than yeah. any other athlete gymnast out there. But for her tonight, it really is about setting herself even further apart than any other gymnast out there on the competition floor. And that's what she is continuing to do with all these new skills that we will be seeing some of them here tonight and, of course, in Tokyo as well. So uh, she won't have any problem making the team, by the way, the Olympic team. But other than Simone, who jumps out, Tim? Uh, Suni Lee. She is uh. just unbelievable. Unbelievable does the hardest bar routine in the world, and that helps Team USA out immensely. She's fantastic. You know whose job I really don't um, recommend at all? Tom Forster, the high performance director for the U.S. team. Got to pick that team. Four team members. Jade Carey, we'll talk about it, has an individual spot. Got another individual spot. But he does have Simone Biles, of course, to rely on. And guys, recently she pretty much broke the Internet with what she did at the U.S. Classic and that vault. She's going to be up on vault. We're going to see her first, but it's worth a look right now. How about this from Indianapolis two weeks ago? Oh, it was absolutely incredible. And not only is this the most difficult vault in the entire world, had even way too much power. <laughs> Crazy. Look at the height. She just smashes it. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to see that tonight. In the warm-ups, she did not perform that vault. She went back to her older vault, the Aminar. Why would she not do that tonight? Well, you know, actually a few moments ago, I talked to her coaches right here in front of us, and, and I asked her exactly that, and she said, you know what? There's really no need to do it here. She did it at the U.S. Classic, the qualifying competition to the national championships. She will, however, do it at the Olympic trials in a few weeks, and of course, in Tokyo. Whatever she does, it'll be spectacular. But doesn't she know we're watching tonight? <laughs> we wanted to see that. No, it's just something else. I mean, uh, you run out of adjectives and ways to describe her. Yes, GOAT, greatest of all time. We kind of assume that now. Almost everyone, I think everyone, agrees with that. Uh, but she's not satisfied with what she's... She keeps trying more difficult things. That's the uh, amazing thing. I don't know how many athletes get to that level and, and keep doing new and more difficult things. Well, I think that's, you know, the greatest of all times. Like any sport, they continue to try to not just be better than their competition, but just better than themselves. And we've talked about this, but five years ago now, when she won all the medals that she did at the Rio Olympic Games, she could have come out here this year and pretty much done the same routines that she did there and still be so much further ahead than the rest of the competition. And you know what? She didn't just do that and get back all of her skills and routines. She has done so much more. Laurent Landy, her coach, said right from the beginning which, when he started coaching Simone after the Rio Games, he said, you need to compete against yourself. You have to push yourself every single day to be the best that Simone can be. It doesn't matter that nobody else is even close. And that's a fact. Nobody else is even close. There we go. Just warm up continues here. First rotation in is underway already in Fort Worth. Ron and Nelly, her parents, watching. Spring, Texas is the site. Of course, she was born in Columbus, Ohio, but Spring, Texas is the training site. Now, long way. Texas is the big state, by the way. Yeah. It's not right here. But, sure, uh, but still nice to not have to get on a plane, right, absolutely. to go to a national championship. 
You can see some family members for the gymnasts tonight here watching the U.S. championships. And, of course, in a couple of weeks, you've got the U.S. Olympic trials, which take place. And we'll know after those the four team members who will be going to Tokyo. Well, you know, I think without a doubt, it, <laughs> she's she's pretty much the only lock without being a lock. You know, it's, it's just for her to really just go out there these two days, compete here tonight, compete here on Sunday, two days at the Olympic trials, and she is well on her way to her second Olympic Games. We saw Jordan Childs, one of her teammates there, and she's been, boy, just on a hot streak, so much momentum going into these really critical couple of weeks. Yeah, in the all around, all four events, she has scored a 57 plus in two of the meets this year. That score at the last World Championship you know what that was? Second best in the world to Simone. Yeah, the gold medal is Simone, exactly. So you'd, you'd have to think right now, at least, if she can keep this going, uh, she would be one of those four team members. We want Simone warm up again. Well, she's... <laughs> and, and by the way, that was her easier, quote unquote, yeah. easier vault. <laughs> You know, it's great, guys. You, in warm-ups, even, you get some of the loudest cheers when she does something out there. And even before that, we come here to sit at the table, and the other gymnasts are just swarming around her. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, it's funny. It's a, She'll go to a major in international competition like Worlds or the Olympics coming up this summer. And the gymnastics experts from all over the world, they watch every single thing that she does, and they are in awe. So the second half of rotation one, it's underway already. First of a couple of nights for the women. We had the men last night. We'll have them again tomorrow night. But we take you to vault now. I believe she's going to do a Cheng first. Very tricky. Half turn onto the board, then half turn to the table. She'll jump off that and do a laid out somersault with one and a half twists has a maximum starting score of 16.0. Her double pike that she debuted at the Classic has a provisional number of 16.6. And waiting for the other events to take place right now but you can hear i was just listening in because i wanted to hear the crowd build and they were and then they realized oh it's going to be a moment here we go just absolutely incredible i mean all night long we are going to see gymnastics just like this and and we've talked about what is it that makes her so great? It's really hard sometimes to put into words, but it is vaults like this. They are so extremely difficult, but she performs them with such ease. Look at this, a half turn onto the vaulting table, and look at the extension, the body position. Toes are pointed. Just... Now, see, that's uh, the uh, best <laughs> one I've ever seen her do, of that I, vault. I think you're absolutely right. Just so much going on in the air, as we were saying. And a lot of times she does a kind of a quick little slide back. I'd call that a stick, though. Very, very hard to pull that off. Five medals in Rio, four of them gold. The all around, the team, the floor, the vault. Won the bronze on beam and favored to do at least that in Tokyo. And you can really see the greatness of Simone Biles on this vault. She is just rocket fast back to the table and will just explode. Watch how high she is. Oh my, <laughs> my God. <laughs> Too much power. I'll tell you what, she could do, you know, I know she doesn't want to do a triple full, but she could do a three and a half. Absolutely, she could do it. Well, and, and to that, I think she's going to say, I'll just do my ear tinkle double pipe, yeah, Tim. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> so look at how fast her arms go back to the table. That is crazy.
critical, and then she is instantly off the table. She's going up. She hasn't stopped going up. Wow. And really almost has to kick out of it, using her arms out in the air to almost stop the rotation. So many athletes, when they do this vault, it's almost like they're barely yep. finishing their twist by the time that their feet are hitting the ground. <laughs> she finishes Look it. Look at the height. It's, it's unbelievable. She needed not her arms. She needed like a cape or like. <laughs> it's right. The slow a, down. A, pa right. a parachute. No, it's amazing. And, and we get to see it quite a bit, but you feel lucky every time you see her compete. Wow. Look at that execution. Yeah. When was the last time we saw a 9.8? Yeah, it's Probably from her. Yes. <laughs> World all around champ, Chelsea Memel coming back, and we saw her in Indianapolis a couple of weeks ago as well, and it is something. It's inspirational to watch her compete at this level again. Her dad pulled me aside right before the meet, her dad and coach, and said, Chelsea hasn't competed this vault since 2006. Watched it in warm-ups earlier this week. It was amazing. Wow. Really good. <laughs> you know, I think when she did compete that in 2006, this might be even better than them. I, I absolutely would agree. Hug from her dad, Andy. And think about the courage that it's taken along the way. What started just as a workout session and having fun, and then the pandemic hit, she had more and more time got a little more serious. She started to do things she didn't realize that she could do and then said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and come back. It I mean, this has been such an inspiration to be able to watch her, as you, as you said, Terry. It, it is just showing so many people, not just in the sport of gymnastics, but just all around the world, whether it's sports or just life, that age truly just is a number. She she was vaulting right in front of us in, in the training session earlier, and then she kind of gave us this look like a deep breath. She was nervous, but. How do you like those numbers right there? 1475, it's in green. And just to give you a little look at making it maybe a little easier to watch the numbers and stay with the recent major international meets in green, you're excellent, safe in yellow, and you don't want to be in red. So take that all in as we go over to Jordan Childs. Yes, the U.S. vault silver medalist in 2018 and right now just on a roll. She'll do the same vault that we just saw from Chelsea. Excellent. Yeah, that was great. Training a more difficult vault. 20-year-old from Vancouver, Washington, who in early 2019 moved to Texas to train in spring alongside Simone Biles. And it's, it's not a bad person to train alongside. <laughs> yeah, when you get to work out with the greatest of all time every single day. But she gets great block off that table as well. Really open position, right? As she's reaching for the ground, doesn't bend in her hips at all. It's going to be a big number. All around silver medalist at the 2017 U.S. Championship. So she does have some experience. But when you think about the Olympics and that team coming together, um, doesn't have that experience, but certainly every day in the gym with Simone Biles and now having competed at this level, she's looking pretty good right now. She really is. And, you know, we've talked about... The Olympics being postponed, obviously, a year, and, and how for some it's been just luck has not quite been on their side because they ha were at their peak a year ago. Yeah. And then for others like Jordan, she, in my opinion, is, is better than she has ever been. Ab so, I agree, absolutely. Yeah. And Perhaps so that year pretty much, you know, helped her get to the place that she is here. Made a big statement with a win at the All Around at the Winter Cup in February, then the runner up at. U.S. Classic, Simone Biles, the star. What a, what a start to the night here for the women in Fort Worth. The 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by Prevagen, the number one pharmacist recommended memory support brand. By Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. And by Home Life. Selling starts at homelight.com.
Get you caught up on this first rotation as we bring you back inside Dickey's Arena and Suni Lee, the 18-year-old from St. Paul, Minnesota, a little earlier on the uneven bars, Nasty. Oh my gosh, and this is probably already the highlight of the night for me. Absolutely the most difficult bar scene in the entire world. And what makes it so difficult, not only are the skills, each and every single one, so hard, but the way that she connects it, every single one, there is no room for error. Right here, another sequence. This is the hardest bar routine in the world. She is a virtuoso. This routine, I believe, if she did it in the last world, that would have been the gold medal right there. What a start. Certainly one of those hopefuls and in line. They grab a spot, 15.3, the number. Gigantic. But that 6-8, the, the other highest score I've ever seen is 6-5 from anybody else. How about Michaela Skinner earlier on vault? Great first vault, great second vault, and this is where she can really add a lot to Team USA. She knows it, they know it. At the Classic, I thought she got a little underscored. They're a little bit more accurate tonight. 14-9-7-5, big score for her. 24-year-old from Arizona, so that's the number for her. But then on beam, Lori Hernandez, the 20-year-old who's one of the breakout stars in Rio. You see the knee wrapped and the effort on beam. And afterward, we find out that that is it for her tonight. Not for the entire weekend, but tonight. We saw her up there in the warm-ups, and they wrapped and taped the knee. So obviously working on that. And now what you wanted to see from one of the top names here at the U.S. Championships as that comeback bid continue. Get you up to date as we go on, but more of Simone Biles, the star here in Fort Worth this week. Back at the U.S. Championships in Fort Worth, the first rotation in the books. Simone Biles, there's a shock. Simone Biles in the lead. Suni Lee, excellent, right behind Jordan Childs, Michaela Skinner, Mari Drayton. But, boy, what a good start. As you look at Jade Carey, the 21-year-old from Phoenix, and already wrapped up a spot, an individual spot in Tokyo at the Olympics. And, and just to further set the stage, 14 members, individual spot, and another individual spot. This happened Wednesday here in the arena. Unbelievable. That is a triple twisting, double layout. Never thought I would see this done. Now, Simone Biles introduced a triple twisting double on floor exercise at the 2019 season. This, if she does this at the Olympic Games, it'll be a carry, and it's a big one. I think it's the hardest piece of gymnastics, personally, I've ever seen. And, and by the way, video credit goes out to, to Tim oh, right here. Oh, that was here. Tim. <laughs> oh, yeah. I did not know that. He was ready that. to capture it down there on the floor. I was so excited. How could you be? How could you not be, though? Can I just have you repeat what you just said, though, Tim, about the most difficult? Yeah, it's you know, I mean, Simone Biles, her vault certainly is is right there, that double pike. But you know, it, a triple twisting double layout as opposed to doing it in tucked like Simone does is just off the chart. She's not going to do that here tonight, though. Just a double double. <laughs> Red flag go up, out of bounds.
you know, being at a national championships when there is so much pressure, especially in an Olympic year, she has to have a little confidence <laughs> going into any <laughs> event knowing she's already secured her spot on the Olympic team. And as we talked about, she did not do the triple twisting double layout. We'll be doing it at the Olympic trials in a few weeks, but you know, I was obviously joking when I said just a double double because this <laughs> is still extremely difficult. Two twists, two flips, laid out position, and you, you see that mat there. She is able to use that. And you know, I was talking to her dad before the meet began, and dad and coach, and you know, he was t I was telling me what he was going to do. She was going to do on floor, and she came over and said, "Hey, I, I I did hurt my ankle at the U.S. Classic, and so that's why I'm not doing." all of the hard stuff because I want people to know that, you know, I'm, I'm I can do tough. more. I yeah, can do more. Exactly. Bring you over to fault. Leanne Wong, the 17 year old from Overland Park, Kansas. Oh Beautiful. boy. We were there to watch her break through on the senior level back in March of 2019, winning the American Cup in Greensboro. And that was after the U.S. Junior All-Around Gold Medal. Simone Miles still to come when we come back to Fort Worth. Back at the National Championships, the number for Jade Carey for floor, 13.25. Remember the step out of bounds, Leanne Wong, 14.75 for that vault we saw as we took you to break. That's a great score. Yeah. <laughs> Big number. Over to uneven bars. And Simone Biles now. Not her favorite. Oh, that, that's uh, <laughs> just an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> she has told us probably every single time that we talk to her, whether it's at a competition or any interview, that she hates the uneven bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, she's, she's the best gymnast in the world on three different events, in my opinion. And she is, this is her week one but it's probably top six in the world, somewhere around there. Mm. So she just really has never felt extremely confident on this event. Right, right here is where she's had some problems lately. A little bit of leg separation, but. <laughs> Big dismount, double twisting, double. <laughs> it's automatic. It's just automatic. Not to be nitpicky, but that is exactly what the judges are going to do. This is really the only visible flaw. Watch her legs come apart a little bit here. She fell on that recently. But no visible error on this dismount. Double twisting, double back, and she does it just again, like everything else with such ease. Everything she does is difficult, but it looks effortless. And I think that's why sometimes when we watch the most difficult elements in the world that she performs, it's almost impossible to believe that they're that difficult because of the way that she does them. Get the number for Simone in a moment. Over the floor, and Morgan Heard, the 19-year-old, trying to return to that form that won her a surprise world title back in 2017, which she followed up at the Worlds with a bronze medal. But she's had injuries and trying to be consistent now. Not doing all around tonight and started on beam and had a disastrous performance. Two falls at 10.3.
Surgeries on a right elbow or sixth and seventh elbow surgeries throughout her career, and it's really held her back the last year and a half or so. The number for Simone on uneven bars, 14.75, guys. Pretty good for your weakest event. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So two more to go, two events to go for Simone here in Fort Worth tonight. Chelsea Memel now in that same group and over on uneven bars. The 32-year-old mother of two with her six-year-old son, Dashiell, three-year-old daughter, Audriel, in the building watching her. And wow, what a start, Nasty, right? On, on vaulting, that was, that was amazing. You know, it's one thing to just come back out here and, and, and compete again, but when you are doing skills that you have not done in years, and performing them better. Mm. It's, it's just so impressive. Good combination right here. Oh, boy. Oh. That was fingertips. <laughs> Beaver got a heart attack on that. Mm. Oh, boy. Mm. That's interesting. I don't. Well, you know, I think she was supposed to connect that to something else and. and a lot of times doing elements facing the low bar. You know, you're, some athletes are taught how to do giants. It's a totally different tap. Mm. I don't believe I've really ever seen her do a giant facing the low bar. So when you're not able to do that and you would do something the way you would do it the other way and you straddle your legs so your, your, your feet do not hit the low bar. So you see she's too short on that handstand, so wasn't able to connect it into something, so it was just better for her to hop off than risk hitting her feet on the bar and impossibly getting injured. Live now. Wow. Chelsea Memo things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Got everybody oh. in the house rooting for, including her husband, her son, oh. I said, remember? It, Tears her, in his eyes. Daughter's here, and then you've got her, her dad coaching her, her mom and sister out there helping as well. And, you know, it's an arena full of people just in awe of Simone Biles, but all rooting for Chelsea Memel, too, right now. That's great. <laughs> Watching Simone Biles tonight, and we're going to watch her compete. Try to be the first woman to win back-to-back -back Olympic all-around titles in over 50 years at the Olympics, beginning July 23rd, live from Tokyo on NBC. Meanwhile, the U.S. championships continue as we send it over to Andrea Joyce. Well, Terry, you know, the gymnast here will tell you that Nationals is a very special event, but it is particularly sweet this year for Suni Lee. She absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree when she told us that her family would be here to watch her compete in Fort Worth in person for the very first time in three years. The whole family, mom, dad, and three siblings drove in from Minnesota yesterday. Now, you may recall a few days before the 2019 Nationals, Suni's dad, John had a horrible accident. He fell off a ladder and was paralyzed. Well, we are happy to report. I talked to John today and he has made some progress. He is part of an experimental program that uses electrical stimulation to fire his muscles. He can move his legs a bit, just enough, Suni told us, to kick her. Lovingly, of course, but uh, as it has been for so many people, this year has been very difficult for the Lee family. After losing two close relatives to COVID, John told me today that being here to see SUNY compete is an incredible gift. Terry? They are extremely close, and SUNY often talks about what it means to have them watching from home at the World Championships. If you guys remember, he was watching, John was on TV with tears in his eyes. And it was just that day before the Nationals in 2019 when it happened, and uh, she came and competed, was so good. And to have them here is awfully special. In fact, she posted on social media earlier tonight that just in time for the meet, Eve and John. That's great.
Midway through rotation number two here in Fort Worth. Here is Suni Lee about to compete on balance beam. Another one of those athletes coming back from injury. Yeah, and she's really had this problem with her foot and ankle, you know, really since 2019. been just spectacular on the uneven bars, but this has also been a very strong event for SUNY. A little just off on pretty much almost every skill. Nothing too major, but slight wobbles. Showing some signs of nerves. Oh, and she did only one layout step out there. I believe she did the same thing at, at the U.S. Classic. You know, a much easier dismount than we will be seeing from some of the other athletes, but sometimes life is put into perspective <laughs> by the situa situations. I think her mom's glad that effort is over. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. So many moms, they, they can't even watch. Yeah, exactly. You know, your mom never watched, right? Uh, she watched warm-ups. Yeah. <laughs> and then excused herself from the arena. Jordan, Jordan Child's mom can't watch. Look at that sigh. <laughs> You know, but but as I was saying for SUNY, I mean, that uneven bar routine really is not only just spectacular, but that is really the spot that she can help Team USA, the, the, the place where she can secure her spot on the Olympic team. And here's that dismount. So you see some leg separation there at the end. It was, ju it was just a little tentative, but I, not bad at all, though. 18 years of age, St. Paul, Minnesota, and you kind of forget that they're people away from competition graduates high school this week. <laughs> Big week for her. Yeah. So we get the number in a moment. Meanwhile, over to floor in 21st after the first rotation, Sky Blakely, just 16 years of age, Frisco, Texas, her hometown, and 35 days too young to compete in Tokyo in 2020, but not 2021. <laughs> Bounds there. Love her gymnastics. She is just wonderful to watch. Unfortunately, had a really rough start on the balance beam, came off, but she's wonderful. Yeah, we saw her a couple of weeks ago at the U.S. Classic have a problem on the beam as well. Other than that, she was pretty good. And you know, the balance, the all around. Yeah, absolutely. The balance beam actually is where she really is it, so exceptional when she is able to hit. 
So the numbers momentarily for her. Suni Lee on beam, 13.9, guys. And you see that execution. So an 8.3, which is out of a 10.0. And it was, as you said, Tim, it was not nothing, nothing really drastic, but every single element was just a little off, a little unsure of herself. All right, how about Kayla DiCello, the 2018 U.S. Junior Vault champ and one of those young rising stars a few moments ago on vault. A lot of power. We've seen some great double-twisting Yurchenkos today. 14-6-5 and enough to jump into fifth place overall. Remember, rounding out this second rotation. All right, Jordan Childs, all-around silver medalist. A moment ago, her effort on uneven bars. Does a lot of releases in this routine. Has always been good on bars, but much cleaner now. Beautiful. Combination. That's this right here. This little flyway with a half turn. Ginger. Man. Wow. Right? It's amazing what a little confidence can add to your gymnastics. And that, her coach right there, Cecile, has said that when she first came, she just had so little confidence, so much talent, so much ability, and just didn't believe in herself. Sixth in the all-around the last time the U.S. Championships were held back in 2019. And looking for better than that this time around. 13.45 for Sky Blakely for her floor. So we continue here in Fort Worth and the leader throughout best in the world, Simone Biles. It's where the greatest in the game come to compete. If you're a golf fan, you know that music. It means the 76th U.S. Women's Open coming your way from the Olympic Club in San Francisco tomorrow at 2 Eastern on NBC. Uninterrupted coverage presented by Rolex. Beautiful couple of days here in Fort Worth so far as we continue after the second rotation. Two teammates who trained together in Texas, Simone Biles and Jordan Childs. On top of the leaderboard, Suni Lee right there. Familiar names, maybe names that you'd expect to see there in the top three, four, five. As we continue, and Miles will be on beam when we come back to Fort Worth. Back inside Dickey's Arena here in Fort Worth, set for rotation three to get underway. Terry Gannon, Nastia Lucan, Tim Daggett, and Andrea Joyce, and Simone Biles will start on beam. Remember, it's a bronze medal in Rio on balance beam for Simone. Yeah, and if she didn't reach down and grab it, she probably would have won that one, too. She did at the most recent World Championships get the gold on beam. She got a bunch more too, though. Yeah. All around floor exercise, vault, team. Oh my gosh, she spins so fast on that. Let's see who's coming up, three elements in a row. Perfect. You know, she performed, I keep saying this about every single event, but Especially, oh, as I was just about to say, she performs every skill as if she's just on the floor exercise. Not a balance beam that's four inches wide. Yeah. There's nobody harder on Simone Biles than Simone Biles. <laughs> and she won't be happy. Full twisting double.
And you are correct. The look on her face as she left. It's a it's a really smart routine, though. What she was doing for Rio, she had a skill that was very problematic, and she wanted to keep it in. But watch this turn. I've never seen anybody that even comes close to how fast she spins on this. This is a wolf turn. It's like, holy, that is unbelievable. I mean, other gymnasts do that, but I would say it takes twice as long to get around. Here's that dance element. So a switch leap to a switch half, and she was just a little bit off. I was supposed to connect it to this skill right here. But here's that dismount. So extremely difficult. Full twisting, double back, but <laughs> she has done something even more difficult, which is also called a bios. A double twisting, double back, didn't do it here. Competed at the World Championships. Got a ridiculously low value for it. And, and that's been a point of contention. Every time she does something new, um, feeling like it's under. Yeah. Well, it, it, it is. It, it was. What? The value they gave that double twisting double somersault was ridiculously low. And, you know, basically they're saying that, you know, they're saying they don't want to encourage gymnastics at that level. They think it's dangerous. Right. It's an open code. That's what the code is designed for. Right. And if it was given the full number. I mean, it's already clear that she is better than everybody in the world, but it would even be a wider margin. Yeah, and you, you add what she's doing on vault now? Yes. It's... But, you know, that's what we talk about. The greatest athletes in the world, they are continuously just competing against themselves. She does not even have to be doing these upgraded skills in routines, but she is competing against herself. She is trying to be better than the Simone Biles that won all the medals that she did already at the Olympics. Yeah, you said it earlier, Nastia. She could have done, she could do in Tokyo the exact same stuff she did in Rio, and she would win, and she would do it in dominating fashion. So that numbers, we take you over to Suni Lee in third place after the second rotation and now on floor. Really nice to see her tumbling here. She told us that only going to do three passes here, still kind of being careful with that ankle, but looking really good. You know, she said it was really important for her to do the all-around here so she could have that experience going into the Olympic trials. In a few weeks, of course, making her family so proud. And she has said so often that they have never put any pressure on her, and her, her dad continually reminds her, go out there and have fun. Make this fun. And she tries to think of that before every event. It's awesome. Just. She gives me chills. It's just uh, her story, you know, the, the perseverance, all that she's overcome. And I tell you what, the start of that routine was fantastic. The last landing, though, that I'm sure hurt her ankle a little bit. 
part of the Hmong community in St. Paul, very tight-knit community there, really supportive of her and her efforts in gymnastics. So she waits for the number now. Sky Blakely take you over here to 19th place after the second rotation. Not the start she was hoping for. So a short time ago, the effort on vault. That was great. Chenko double full, great form in the air. And, and Tim, as you mentioned, had the fall on her first event in the balance beam. But look at the execution score, 9.3 out of a 10.0. Yeah, that's gigantic. Terry, you know, we talked about just everything that has happened in the last year. And, and for somebody like Sky, she was not expecting to be competing at a senior national championships and, and, and hopefully an Olympic trials in a few weeks. She had, of course, the next Olympic Games in sight. Yeah, for a long time. She's been pointing at that date on the calendar, and all of a sudden it's thrust upon her. Hey, you could go in 2021, and that brings pressure as well. All right, Jordan Childs in second after the second rotation, about to go on beam. We oftentimes ask the athletes, you know, do you think about the Olympic Games? And most of them tr say, I try not to think about it at all. And when I asked her last, she says, oh, yeah, I think about it at least three, four times a day. <laughs> well, well, that's the honest truth. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, how can you not? Yeah. She said she watched in Rio, watched the athletes in Rio and cried. They were my friends trying to be Come on. next in line. So 13.75 for Suni Lee for the floor exercise. As Jordan Childs waits. By the way, we saw Lori Hernandez in injured earlier. There was a statement made that the safe, exactly what we thought, the safe decision made to keep her from the field to play tonight. But a uh, decision will be made, reassessed, in terms of going forward in the last evening of competition here in Fort Worth. Now, this is probably the most difficult part, waiting your turn, no matter what event, but especially on balance beam. Nerves are already high. And you're just staring there, looking at the judges. <laughs> are you going through your routine, and are you trying not to? You know, I think I think every athlete's obviously different. I, for me, I, I was a big visualizer, so that's exactly what I was doing. And also thinking, okay, judges, let's go. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'm ready. <hurry> up. <laughs> Big combination. Oh. going to be perfect all the time and she wasn't on that first major pass but I loved what I saw there being able to have a problem and and keep your composure and stay on the beam and not even just during that element but throughout the rest of the routine as well not get not get shaken up yeah that that told me a lot about Jordan Childs Again, the calmness, the confidence. Capable of doing the same dismount that we've seen Simone do super hard. Full twisting double. Little bit under rotated, but that's really, really hard. That's, uh, that's risky, too. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you kind of flinched next to me here in the booth. I did a little bit. You know, we're kind of watching at, at a different angle. So Childs will finish second behind Biles at the U.S. Classic a couple of weeks ago, in second going into this. But oh, right here, look at this. Literally lands on, on one leg, almost in a scale. And she did not freak out. She literally remained so calm. And here's the dismount, so full twisting double back. She does it out of a round off. Simone did it out of two back handsprings. To be honest, equally just as difficult. 
chest down on the landing. So, you know, again, it's that risk reward that we talk about so often doing those difficult skills. She's going to have a lot more deduction than say if she would have just done the double back, but absolutely impressive. Talk about difficulty too. And again, you train with Simone and, and you're looking at that every day in the gym and she's going there as well. Back to remind you, get ready for Girls 5 Eva in the background. I, I heard you say it, Nastia. <laughs> Hilarious new Peacock original from the creative minds behind Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt and Mr. Mayor. Stream every episode. Go to PeacockTV.com. Just sounds cool. All right, back inside. Dickie's Arena here in Fort Worth. The number for Jordan Childs on balance beam as she takes a look. So just under 14. And All right. You see that execution score, 7.85. And really a lot came from that dismount, really low chest on the landing, big step forward. Yeah, if you take a big step, it's three tenths. Small little one, it's a tenth off. All right, earlier when Suni Lee was on floor, I'm sure you heard it and saw it in the background. The effort on beam for Chelsea Memel with the crowd just reacting on every move. You know, we just saw her just about a week ago at the U.S. Classic competition, which again was the qualifier to these national championships and her first time back out there. And it is just like watching almost a, a different Chelsea, not different, but just a lot more confident. That series by handspring layout layout. Just gorgeous. Chelsea is a highly rated judge. And this whole process started with qualification, getting to the American Classic, then the US Classic. And Chelsea judged those meets this year. <laughs> Watch this, this is where she fell at the Classic Arabian Front, holds on. Very powerful athlete. She shows that so well. Really hits the beam hard. That's fantastic, right? Jeez. Yeah, it's, it's also been so much fun just watching the excitement from so many in the audience. You know, when she lands that dismount, you literally see people on their feet cheering for oh. her. And, and not just even her family. People all around the arena. And, and even ones obviously not here around the whole gymnastics community as well. Living with everything that she is doing out here as the ankles get taped, Simone Biles getting set to continue competing here in Fort Worth. Rotation three continues here in Fort Worth. Jade Carey, the 21-year-old from Phoenix who won the vault title back in 2017 at the U.S. Championships, just about ready to go. 2017 at the World, she also won a silver medal on both vault and floor exercise. Just do your Chinko double full, so she's doing as we mentioned, even on the floor exercise, little less difficulty than she is capable of doing. You know, there's really no need to kind of rush being at your peak and at your prime, especially for somebody like Jade, already qualified her spot onto the Olympic team. She is. But you see that right ankle, it's taped up and she said that she really stung it at the classic where she did the same vault that Simone did for her first vault, the Cheng. Yeah, she's secured a spot via the Apparatus World Cup Series individual spot, but she could still wrap up a spot as one of the team members she competing could. in the team event. Yeah. At the Olympic trials, if you place first or second from those two meets, you 
get a locked spot. Yep. In case anyone is ever confused about the qualification process <laughs> to make an Olympic difficult. team, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And great vault once again, capable of doing a lot more difficulty here on, on really both of those vaults, but put a check by it. Mission accomplished here for her. So we take you from vault over to uneven bars and the 18 year old from Minnesota, Grace McCallum, part of the world championships in 2018 and 2019 and all the success at that level for the USA women. And in 2019, the US all around bronze medalist. What, ab what about her situation now in terms of maybe making it to Tokyo? Oh, she's she is right there. I mean, there are a number of athletes that are right. You know, they are so close together. Her, DiCello, Skinner, there, there are a bunch of them. But she, you know, all these athletes, we're talking about how difficult the pandemic was. It was very hard for her as well. And in the comeback, getting back in shape, she broke a bone in her hand. It's called a boxer's fracture had to have surgery, a plate put in, seven screws to stabilize the joint. And you know, I, I talked with her coach a lot, Sarah Jensi, and she, uh, Sometimes it's a little frustrated because she's capable of, of doing all of these elements connected and oftentimes she kind of wiggles her way out and doesn't do it all. You see the scar on that left hand. You know, her, her coach actually told us that she has almost no aches and pains recently. So other than that hand, she has really been better off physically than most of these athletes. Gorgeous combination right there. And that's the one that a lot of times she gets a little antsy on. Oh, oh. wow. Mm. And she's so capable of doing that. Just kind of took her toes off the bar a little bit too late. The opening of the body doesn't thrust her enough forward and she just floats away from the bar. One full point deduction when you come off the apparatus. She didn't even touch the bar, so she gets no value for that skill as well. So, as you mentioned, Tim, no no value and, of course, the point mm. off in deduction. So a tough go on uneven bars for Grace McCallum. And before she went, it was Kayla DiCello. And take you back to that effort as well. And they're talking things over right now. You can kind of get an idea of how it went. Young Olympic hopefuls. First hand stand a little short there. Of course, the judge is looking for everything to be right on top of the bar in a handstand. Recovered very well from that, though. Had the highest score on the uneven bars at the U.S. Classic. This is really tricky. And she just couldn't get her hands all the way around the bar. The gymnasts wear these grips and they have what's called a dowel on them. And if you catch on top of your dowel, really just about impossible to stay on. 12.9 for the 17 year old from Boyd's, Maryland, who is the U.S. junior all around champ. Back in 2019, three junior world medals as well. But a struggle on the uneven bars. Trains at Hills Gymnastics. Kelly Hill, who has coached many 
many great gymnasts throughout the year. Elise Ray, Dominique Dawes. And in red as well, the number for Grace McCallum. She'll be better come the Olympic trials. She is, looks much better than she did at US Classic, and, and she's gonna get better and better. And overall, the field looks much better than they did at the US Classic, right? Oh, I would say so, absolutely. And, and again, it's, it's kind of that, that timing of the plan and, and the preparation to really try to be at your peak mid-July. Leanne Wong had a solid showing at that US Classic, the 17-year-old now. In as well, but. Oh boy. They're supposed to connect those two elements, had to take an extra swing. <laughs> Missed that skill at the classic. She's capable of doing a double twisting, double layout. I don't know what she's gonna do, maybe just the double layout, and she does. What is it about bars right now? Yeah. You know, one of the things is these bars that they're swinging on, this is not what is typically in the gyms across America. AAI is the typical supplier. These bars are actually Seno bars, which are the Japanese brand that they'll be swinging on in Tokyo. And they are very, very different. And, uh, you know, so it... Uh, some of the gymnasts, Suni, said she didn't like it at all at first, and then now she says she's gotten used to it and loves them. Yeah, you know, and it's such a personal preference. Something like the balance beam, it's even different types of equipment or different brands of equipment, it's still four inches wide, right? The uneven bars sometimes, the bounce mm. of the, the bar, the, you know, the flexibility of them, it, it's so different. Speaking of balance beam, over to it now, Michaela Skinner. Really big element. A back handspring into a back full. So much harder to do it from this first skill. Oh, goodness. I tell you, I see her do this in practice over and over again, and it is rock solid. But she fell on that a couple of weeks ago at the Classic as well. nobody's going to be making an Olympic team here at the national championships, but still a lot on the line making the national team, qualifying on to the Olympic trials. And, and even at the Olympic trials, you know, it's, it's every single time you go out there on the competition floor that the selection committee, they are looking and back at every single performance, looking for consistency. But impressive finish there. And, and I mean, it's just been so incredible to watch her be back out here in, on the elite scene on the competition floor. Yeah, it was a star at the University of Utah. NCAA all-around runner-up twice, Michaela Skinner, but the number for Leanne Wong and a struggle over on uneven bars as we continue in Texas. This is a part of a full week and weekend here at the U.S. Gymnastics Championships. Got men's night two coming your way, 8 o'clock Eastern, and then encore presentation of men's night two and NBC with the women's night two. Simone Biles, the headliner, of course, here at the U.S. Championships. How about one of the all-time great running backs in NFL history, LaDainian Tomlinson. Got his daughter out here watching Simone Biles, Hall of Famer. So one of the all-time greats watching the all-time great in Simone. We welcome you back in, Terry Gannon, Nasty Luke, and Tim Daggett. I, I guess you want to start with Simone, what you've seen uh, so far tonight jumps out. Huh? Absolutely. I mean, speaking about greats, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to 
think about the competition and avoid the obvious. You know, she is out here just in a complete league of her own, going for her seventh national title and really no competition out there. She is so far above the field, not just in the standings, not just in the scores and the points, but the, the, the skills that she's doing, the confidence, every single thing about her, it is just absolutely incredible. All right, how about uh, other than Simone? Well, Jordan Childs, she has been a rock star in every routine she has competed this year so far. Unbelievable, and don't forget about Suni Lee. She looks fantastic as well. Yeah, the big names that we expected to really bring it tonight at the U.S. Championships, they are. And Simone Biles continues to lead here in Fort Worth. Set for the fourth and final rotation here at the U.S. Championships in Fort Worth. Simone Biles leading the way. Jordan Childs there. The teammates won two as they have been. And Suni Lee rounding out the top three. Anybody jump out there as a surprise? We look at the top nine. No, not really. I mean, they're they're all amazing. But that last rotation that was pretty messy. Lots of falls on bars and beam. We'll see with the final rotation what we get as we start with Jordan Childs over on floor. You know, I asked her earlier what she wanted to accomplish in this season, and she says, I just want to go out and be 100% myself. I don't think anyone has ever seen that before. Well, she's been showing it all year long. Wow, some really amazing tumbling, and what a save, right, Nastia, that third pass? Yeah, you know, a lot of athletes would have probably just sat that down, did go out of bounds, but in the big scheme of things, not a big deal, and what a, no. what a night for Jordan. What a year so far. You know, we've seen some great routines on floor from UCLA Bruins. <laughs> That's where she plans on going, but not before a stop in Tokyo, she hopes. Gorgeous body position, super height on this, full twisting double layout, but this is the key. Look at that landing. Fabulous. Here's that last tumbling pass. Double pike. Hot back on the landing, but gosh, she truly has just been on a mission since the start of this year. Yep. It was almost like, okay, let's turn the page. New year, new Olympic year. New Jordan. Right? Absolutely. Made a statement right away. We saw at the Winter Cup in February and then backed it up a couple of weeks ago in Indianapolis. Just keeps doing it here in Fort Worth now. Really, truly just is competing out here on the competition floor looking like an Olympian already. She is. She said three years ago she had lost the love of the sport. She moved to World Champion Center, had new coaches, 
and got to train with Simone. She says, I found that love again. So we'll get her score in a moment. But a moment ago, the effort on beam for Kara Aker, the 18-year-old from Grain Valley, Missouri, and she is terrific here on this apparatus. Oh my goodness. This is a critical routine for her because this is where she could be really a huge plus for Team USA. Gorgeous. Very difficult series. Side aerial into two layouts. No, she was supposed to connect that whole combination right there. And usually she is just so consistent and so and everything just flows from one element into the other. She said the biggest thing she gained from this year was is the mental training. You know, part of that too is so many of these athletes have had to be out of the gym during the pandemic, not being able to train. You know, we talked about this and the same with the men, but so many athletes never take more than just two or three days off, some taking weeks or if not months off of training. So getting back into the mental competition. Uh, she's ph phenomenal on beam, but that, that was not her best effort, that's for sure. So the number for Childs, but Aker second on beam at the last two U.S. championships. So high expectations. And there is the number once again for Jordan. Meanwhile, Sky Blakely over on uneven bars. I love this beginning. Gorgeous. Higgins into a release. Good recovery there with that connection. Short on that handstand. The problems on bars tonight. Could it be the bars? Absolutely. You know, w without a doubt, because they do not really have a lot of time to get used to the equipment. It is part of being an elite gymnast. You have to try to adjust as quickly as you can. But that is also the reason that you come to a competition, especially something like the World Championships, the Olympic Games, with plenty of time to train and get used to the equipment, get used to the environment, the time change perhaps. Even here at the national championships, having a few extra days to train on the podium, even that, you know, is a change. You might re recognize that <laughs> coach right there. That's Yevgeny Marchenko. He was the personal coach of the great Carly Patterson, Olympic champion from Woga. fun seeing him back out on the competition floor. It is, it's great. <laughs> so there's the score for Kara Aker, 13-7. She has a huge difficulty score, 6.2. You see that 7.6 execution. That's a lot of deductions. Mm -hmm. For her. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. yes. You see that penalty, so on, on the balance beam, most likely over time, you can only have 90 seconds to complete your full routine. So we saw Jade Carey last on vault, and now go over to her, the 21-year-old, in a share of sixth place going into this final rotation, and we'll see if she can bring something on uneven bars that we haven't seen lately. Well, you know, the pandemic helped her tremendously. She was really a, a low-level gymnast, just about two years ago on the uneven bars, and she has upgraded her difficulty. It's just amazing. I, I, I don't think I've ever seen an athlete 
go, come so far on an event that maybe is not the most natural event for her. Mm -hmm. So many athletes had different experiences too in the pandemic, and you're right, there were some that were not able to train for quite some time. Others barely missed a day or two during that time in terms of, at least of going to the gym. Sky Blakely, 12.95 for the problem she had on uneven bars, and now Carrie just about ready with her dad out there. There she goes. Wow. She did it. I asked her if she was going to do it, and she says, if oh. I. Good said, recovery if, there. Yeah, she said, if I'm in the right position, I'll do it. Wow. I mean, this is really hard gymnastics. It, basically, every element in this routine she learned in the last two years. Capable of doing a double double. That was that was spectacular. That's not low level anymore. No, not at all. This is unreal combination right here. She's really wanted to compete this. Connecting that Takachev right into that flyway with a half. Awesome. Just great, great stuff. You know, one's considered a specialist that has always been extremely strong on vault and floor, but well on her way to the Olympic Games, competing in the all around. Top five after three rotations. Important week for Kayla DiCello here on beam. in the American Cup a couple of years ago. She told me the best thing about it. This is really nice right here. Oh, no. oh boy. And this is, this is very unusual for her. You know, she's a really tough competitor and, and doesn't, doesn't typically have these kinds of falls in competition. Still quite young, definitely benefited from the extra year and the delay in the Olympics. Trying to prove that she belongs there. Jade Carey, the number 1395. And that, that is a very big number on bar. She, and she had a couple little errors there, but the big stuff, she did great. All right, so in this final rotation, Simone Biles, of course, has led throughout. She'll be the last one to go on floor time now. Our Believe You Will performance presented by Guaranteed Rate and courtesy of Simone. Could it be anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> just unbelievable in every way. Double-double here. Yikes. Just Full twisting double back dismount even with a lower level difficulty on some of these events. It is just absolutely incredible to be able to witness this. Believe you well performance presented by Guaranteed Rate. Yeah, we're speeding that up just a little bit. <laughs> She's great, but you know, uh, one final event left. She'll be on floor to close out the evening here. Night number one for the women setting up that final night on Sunday. 
And that, that's not a, time to that, go to that's sleep. That's very yet. typical. That is very typical of her. She does that all the time. A lot of people say I'm not an expert, obviously, but sometimes that happens a lot in competitions, whether it's nerves or not that, you know, she probably has too many of those, but. <laughs> She sure doesn't look like she does. But. I bet she does, though. Oh, yeah. Inside, oh, yeah. every athlete does. Yeah. Makes it look like she doesn't, but. The number for DiCello, 12 6 5. Mm. So Grace McCallum in 15th after the third rotation, ready on beam here. Slow and controlled, you know? As opposed to Simone just like rips it out. <laughs> Both ways, you know, totally acceptable. Beautiful. The best night here, but as we mentioned, the Olympic trials coming up in a few weeks. And, and she's going to be the athlete that with just a few more weeks of training and preparation and in some more numbers, the level of confidence and in my opinion, I think she's going to, to be even better than she has improved upon just in the last week from the US Classic when we when we saw her. I agree. Double pike, really nice. Last time around at the U.S. Championship, she had a rough night one, was in eighth place, but came roaring back on night two to capture the bronze medal. Grace McCallum as we continue from Texas. The 2021 U.S. Gymnastics Championships are brought to you by ProForm. Visit ProForm.com and train like a pro by Angie, formerly Angie's List, your home for everything home. And by Tenna, kinds of skin protects like Tenna. Fort Worth, Texas, for the first time hosting the U.S. Championships. They've been in Texas four times, first time in this city, but Simone Biles, dominant once again throughout and waiting for that last event, the effort on floor from her. Meanwhile, Michaela Skinner in eighth place going into this final rotation on floor. And she can tumble <laughs> as well. Massive difficulty. Out of bounds, and that was both feet, so that'll be three tenths of a deduction plus the steps. She went out again, both feet again. Didn't see a flag being raised. That was a jam-packed routine. So much difficulty, but. There were errors. Oh, yeah. 
Stepping out of bounds. Been so good through the years at this event on, well, seven-time U.S. medalist on floor and vault. And a great star at the University of Utah. Had a rough go during the pandemic, though. Contracted COVID and eventually pneumonia. All right, Suni Lee just a moment ago on vault. This is great to see Suni vaulting again. Hadn't seen this since the 2019 World Championships. Double twisting Yurchenko. That was the big question mark. Can she still vault with that foot ankle the way it is? And she can. And again, said it was so important for her to come out here and do all four of the events, compete in the all around again for the Olympic trials. When the pressure, the nerves, the expecta expectations are going to be even mm. higher there than they are here. So this conversation and all the laughing, can't see it on the screen, but that is with Simone Biles. They are very good friends. You ask and <laughs> our great people in the truck deliver. There you go. 14-4, yeah. Yep. All right, how about Riley McCusker, the 2017 Uneven Bars champ? There have been problems throughout the night over on bars, but now the 19-year-old who's now down in Phoenix, training with Jade Carey and Brian Carey. She did a vault at the US Classic and really tweaked her foot ankle. Because of that, this is the only event she's competing here tonight. Really big sequence right here. Gorgeous. Supposed to connect something right there, but not a big problem. It just loses a little bit of bonus. Pretty darn good. I had to wait till the very end of the night for that one routine. How difficult is Ugh. that? Oh, right? really difficult. The hug from Jade Carey. They, they become really close and kind of work off each other. You know, each one is good at different things, and so they very much complement each other. You know, it's, it's been interesting. Obviously, we didn't see Riley on floor exercise here at this competition, but not the floor exercise has not always been Riley's strength, where it has been Jade's. And for Jade, <laughs> uneven bars has not been her strength, right. and now she has gotten so much better. So. Perhaps two teammates helping each other out, gaining some confidence on the events that, you know, they have possibly lacked the confidence in. Been really happy the coaching situation and where she is, the training situation. Now Michaela Skinner, an even 13 for that floor exercise. So, and you see those penalties, almost a half a point. Yeah, I, I don't know how you get a half a point though. It's three for one of them and maybe two times with one foot going out. Meanwhile, a few moments ago, Leanne Wong over on balance beam. I like this combination right here and to a leap. Very nicely done. Triple twist, extremely difficult, just gorgeous gymnastics we have seen from her. So with the number 1365 in green right there, so it's solid. And a move into fourth, you got 
Suni Lee, Charles Carey, and Leanne Wong. Remember, Simone will finish it off on floor. McCusker, the number on uneven bars, 14.65. You can tell she's happy. Huge number. It was a great routine. She could actually fill a spot uh, as a specialist because the USA will get an additional spot outside of Jade and the four-person team. Yep. And so it comes down to this. All eyes about to be on Simone Biles on floor exercise as she closes it out here on night one for the women in Fort Worth. And she has a brand new floor routine. She actually competed at the U.S. Classic about a week ago, but was on Dancing with the Stars a few years ago, and her partner, Sasha Farber, actually choreographed this routine, and I spoke to him recently, and he said, you know, I thought it would be really fun to mix in some Latin style into her routine. She obviously did it on the show, but did it very well, so wanted giving her, a, obviously, a style she's never done makes sense. It's, it's the only thing that keeps it fun and different. That's cool. She does two biles in this routine. The first pass and the second pass. Triple twisting, double back. Wow, perfect. There's that second biles coming up. Double layout with a half turn. Look at the end. I mean, it is just uh, no words can describe uh, the greatness, the perfection, even when she does have mistakes, even when she steps out of bounds. Yeah. <laughs> so impressive. I know they got to count it. She steps up, but I, you just sit here and you shake your head in amazement. And Jordan Childs was right there watching it up close. And all the congratulations from the other gymnasts. That was really fast, but yeah, it was fast. <laughs> triple yeah. twisting double. <laughs> the only challenge Simone ever has is staying in bounds on floor. Look, at, she's floating in the air, and every time you step out, it's a deduction. She had a bunch of those, but everything else, oh. I mean, the audience came for a show, and, and they truly got one with that first tumbling pass alone. Let's take another look. So this is, of course, the Biles, two twist. Two flips, three twists, in absolutely perfection. I don't think I have ever seen a better tumbling pass in my life. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's that's jaw-dropping. It's awe-inspiring. Ever. Yet, she ever. Des she deserves more than one rose for that, though. Wow. <laughs> to close it out, Simone Biles on floor. As we send it down to Andrea. Okay, hey, Simone, one Hi. step closer to your seventh national title. You and your coaches always talk about how you're really competing against yourself out there. Yeah. So in your opinion, how do you think you did tonight in that matchup? Um, tonight I feel like it was really good. It was definitely better than classic, so I'm happy. I'm excited to have a full crowd again. Floor could have been a little bit better. I need to control my adrenaline going into my passes, but I'm not mad at today's meet at all. So this is your second Olympic cycle, but right. really the first nationals that you've been able to share this experience with so many of your team members mm -hmm. from your gym. I mean, it was like a WCC party out there. <laughs> what is that like for yeah. you? It's been an amazing experience, especially to guide the younger ones through this Olympic experience. They've never been through it, so it's been really fun.
So you said that during this past year you became a champion dog walker, a champion <laughs> cleaner. What else did you take away from this last year that maybe you learned about yourself yeah. that'll help you in your gymnastics world? I would say never take anything for granted and we were out of the gym and a lot has happened over this past year so we're just grateful to be back out here doing what we love. All right, well congratulations, we'll see you on Sunday. Thank you, love you guys. Grateful to watch you too. And another night to come. Parents loved it in the stands. So many family members here for a number of the gymnasts watching here. Night one complete now at the U.S. Championships for the women. You're, right. You're right. More than what well, there is a second row, there, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. I'll yeah. tell you what I'm most impressed with is that she's able to have a conversation immediately after all that amazing tumbling. That's the condition that she's in. It's superhuman. Coming to you, Jane. Barely out of breath. <laughs> Almost. I just, I, I, I've got no other words besides it is just greatness, perfection. Pick your superhero. She's better. So you close out night one, and she's atop the leaderboard, no doubt, at 2.4 points ahead of Suni Lee into second place and Jordan Child. So that'll be a great race as we watch them on night number two. But night one in the books, and that second night of the women's competition come your way on Sunday. We kick it off at 7 Eastern on NBC. Tomorrow night, you got the leader, Brody Malone, looking for his first U.S. championship. Six-time champ Sam McCulloch still in the mix. Night two of the men's competition at 8 Eastern on NBCSN. Coming up next, it's the Stanley Cup playoff. Colorado looking to take a 3-0 series lead against Vegas. For Nastia, Tim, and Andrea, I'm Terry Gannon. So long for now from Fort Worth.